Right, so we're not exactly wind free today, but it's a lot warmer than it was during my last flight and not a sign of any rain in the clouds. So I'm gonna go ahead and push on with this OcuSync test that I've wanted to do for a while. I'm gonna be using version 1.3.1 of the DJI Fly app on my iPhone 12. So that shouldn't make a big difference in terms of the performance of the drone, but there have been various firmware updates as well, which could potentially make a difference to the stability of the flight. So we're gonna get the drone into the air and see how this OcuSync 2.0 technology is functioning at the moment on the DJI Mini 2. Enjoy. Right, so just as we find some satellites here, hopefully you guys can hear me. And apologies if you hear any chainsawing. I do have uh, my old man around along with one of his mates in order to help get some of this gardening done. Uh, I said I would help myself, but you know, you don't always get appropriate conditions for flying the DJI Mini 2, so you have to take them when you get them. Anyhow, let's get into the air now. And in all honesty, my drone fly app is telling me that we have winds of nine miles an hour, but it is actually feeling a little bit more than that if I'm being totally honest. So let's just let that drone hover for a moment and we'll see exactly how it handles these gusts here. You can see it's moving over to the side. Okay, well, let's get the drone into the air first of all. Start by getting to a height of about 45 meters or so. And I'm just looking at how that drone is banking there. You can see it's definitely being caught in some winds. I'm currently running in normal mode. So I do expect the drone to be a little bit less resistant to handling these types of gusts, but we'll see how we get on for now. It's not going crazy, but hopefully we'll be able to get the drone uh, back home again. Right, let's just go and get a little bit of distance here. I am trying to fly against the wind. At least that's the plan. So we're at a height of about 45 meters here and I'm just gonna push the drone forwards. I do need to keep it in visual line of sight. So we are gonna be able to use some residential area to really push this OcuSync to the limit. Uh, but around this area, there's actually some radar. I'm not sure where from exactly, but I always get warnings and it plays havoc with the OcuSync signal. So I'm just trying to see if I can find that. It might be a little bit further up and I can definitely see that there's some winds affecting it. One of the great things about the compass interface, it's not perfect. But one of the good things about it is unlike when you're just using the map, you can very much see how the drone is banking in order to try and stay stable in those winds. And we're seeing that the, uh, uh, the attitude lines, that, you know, they're moving quite a bit at the moment. They're not exactly steady. So just something to, to be cautious of as we're flying here. Uh, but let's just go ahead and gain a little bit more range. And straight away, I think this is the radar section. It might be anyway. Yeah, there's a radar around this area. And it, as I say, it just absolutely destroys the signal when we fly above it. But we've still got three bars. Okay, we've dropped down to one here. The way the OcuSync 2.0 works, I'm just gonna check my uh, auto return altitude. Drop that down to 50 because of those winds. Yeah, the way that OcuSync 2.0 works is effectively, it's the same as with the Mini 1, you will connect through standard Wi-Fi bands on 2.4 and 5 gigahertz channels. But with the OcuSync 2.0, the drone can adjust those channels independently of the takeoff location when it's actually flying. Just something that uh, the OcuSync 2.0 will help you with, in theory. So we'll just continue to fly towards these houses, get a little bit more altitude perhaps. And I'm gonna start recording on the drone itself. I don't wanna to go too high again because of those winds. So you could see then that we had the RC signal at two bars, but then it shot up to look to max. And that's when we're flying over these houses. This is really where that OcuSync 2.0 technology is going to come into its own. And yes, it is getting windy, I can feel it myself. 
But as you can see, flying over a residential area here where there's going to be just tons of interference, that signal is just going up and down. With the Mini 1, it's unlikely that it would be able to retain such a strong signal at this point. And yet, as you can see here with the Mini 2, that is not a problem. It's constantly selecting the best channel to uh, give the strongest Wi-Fi connection, which is a really impressive feature. OkiSync 2.0, just as a reminder, doesn't have any kind of different connection. It is still Wi-Fi, but it is that ability, does have that ability to change the actual channel. So just continuing to fly over these houses here, I can see that about 460 metres away, we do still have full signal here, which is really, really impressive, I've got to say. I don't want to push the drone too far away from my location. So we'll start bringing the drone a little bit closer back towards me here. And we've got another collection of residential area just up ahead. So we'll see how the performance is affected. We're currently at full five bars of RC connection signal here. And just flying over these houses. Again, I'm not going to hover because of people's privacy, but just flying over them, the signal doesn't even drop. It's, it's absolutely fantastic, really, this OkiSync 2.0. And I think with the various firmware updates, and I'm currently running the latest firmware on the drone, the issues that people have talked about before, I think in many ways have now been ironed out. You, in my experience now, you're less likely to get those just random dropouts where you go from full five bars and then bang, it just says completely lost signal and the picture disappears. It can happen. It really can, but it's rarer now. It seems to be anyway. I've had that issue myself in times past, but not for a while. Not for a while. I was just trying to see if I could find that area where the radar would just play havoc with my Wi-Fi connection in times past. It's possible that maybe due to various firmware updates, it's able to account for that kind of signal interference. I'm not sure, but, or maybe the radar's just turned off right now. I'm sure it used to be around this area though, close to this field. I'll take it over these trees. Okay, we are losing a little bit of connection here. But it's, again, just coming back. We're back up to four, down to three bars. And we're down to two here. This might be the radar issue. We're getting weak signal warnings down to one bar. We're at 510 metres, which is really the limit we should be flying here anyway. But even so, that signal down to three bars above residential, I wouldn't be surprised if it jumps up again at some point, is really kind of impressive. So let's go ahead and turn the drone back towards us. And we'll start bringing it back. Oh, by the way, in the last video, uh, one of the issues I had was that the on-screen recording of the iPhone didn't save, and I wasn't sure why. Uh, but a couple of people mentioned to me, and I really appreciate this, that apparently, if you bring the drone back and turn it off whilst you're in the middle of the iPhone's screen recording then it will actually cancel that and lose the video i'm not talking about the video on the drone's sd card but the actual inbuilt apple iphone screen recording app so yeah quite an unusual bug that is but i really appreciate you folks clarifying that issue by the way i know we've been looking at the OkiSync today but even with these strong winds i do want to mention not the strongest winds but fair fairly strong winds the drone has performed admirably I've not had any wind warnings and I've felt the gusts brushing over me so I can only imagine it's a little bit worse 60 plus meters in the air where the drone is currently flying. And there you can see the usual landscapes that I often am found fielding, filming here on the channel. But the drone is back up pretty much above us now. So right above my head. I think we'll bring it back. We've had a good test there of the OkiSync technology. We've brought the battery down to 45% flying over those houses. And I really, really am impressed with just how that channel is able to adjust on the fly thanks to that technology.
So I'm just going to go ahead and land here. Okay, here we come. Right. And we're back safe and sound. And I'm kind of happy because this was my first flight since being caught out in the rain previously. And I can actually see that drone is moving around a little bit in the wind there. I'm not touching the sticks, as you can see. It's just being pushed over to the side. That is the force of the wind. And that's fairly low down. So the fact that the drone is able to... Look, at it's moved right over now. The, the drone is able to account for that when 60 metres high is mightily impressive. But yeah, I'm glad it's working absolutely fine after uh, being just soaked during the last video. It really was, especially because this drone is not waterproof at all and all of the SD card and everything is exposed in the back of the drone without any coverings and stuff. So very happy about that. Uh, but yeah, the OkiSync 2.0 technology with app version 1.3.1 here on iPhone and with the latest firmware installed on the drone seems to be working absolutely as we would expect it to. And flying over those houses where there's going to be a lot of signal interference did not really affect the drone's ability to fly. And even when we did lose signal, it just went ahead and reconnected to a more appropriate channel. But I'm interested in hearing what you folks think about the OkiSync 2.0 technology on the DJI Mini 2. Has it impressed you or do you still have issues with various signal problems when flying over specific areas? Please do share your thoughts down in the comments. And as always, guys, if you want to be notified of future DJI Mini 2 videos, then please don't forget to drop a sub on my channel. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the like button. That would be very much appreciated. But thank you so much, folks, for sharing your time with me today. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. And until next time, happy flying.